CEFA is uh, it's mandated with the procurement and distribution of natural gas for Cyprus. There's a strategy and plan for DEFA to take its role. Uh, of course, in the next couple of years, the main focus is to actually bring the gas to Cyprus, uh, which is the pillar of everything going forward. It's like the stepping stone. If that doesn't happen, everything else is, uh, is secondary. So effectively what we have is that uh, the Cyprus, through these LNG facilities, creates a virtual uh, pipeline or connection to Europe because then basically you could have uh, RFSRU and if there is pipeline gas eventually uh, uh, connecting with uh, Europe then you can use that and, 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 and put gas in the pipeline if necessary. But I think the main point right now is uh, it is isolated. Uh, we're trying to break this isolation by actually making the right kind of uh, uh, infrastructure and the right kind of channels in order to be able to have gas flowing. Uh, and then later on, uh, as, a, as a development, because uh, Cyprus could develop as a bunkering hub uh, for, uh, let's say, providing LNG for ships, uh, or through the various projects for the interconnector or the ISMED pipeline and so forth. There are things that will follow, assuming we are successful in implementing the project. I think the main challenges that uh, we are facing is one of uh, trying to do a very challenging project uh, in a very short period of time. How we are dealing with the challenges effectively by by engaging all the stakeholders. I think the, we would like to thank the support that we got from uh, both the public and the private sector for, uh, for achieving or bringing the project where it is. All the stakeholders, uh, because uh, without the support of the environment, and this is what we would hope to keep uh, and maintain, to have the support of the environment uh, happening, and also the help and support we've gotten from the European Union uh, in terms of, uh, of the funding available and other ways of uh, supporting the project to make this finally a reality for Cyprus and affect the transformation of the economy for the island. We've managed this effort to convince everybody that this is a project of national interest, importance, uh, so we just have to get on and do it. Timing is the biggest challenge. The project is aiming to be live within 2020. The discovery of Aphrodite is part of the reason why DEFA was not successful in the past. Uh, because, uh, and there's a reason for stating it like that, because uh, Cyprus is immature in the area of hydrocarbons, so let's say it's, it's a new thing. Uh, the environment couldn't really judge uh, the timelines that are involved in the hydrocarbons industry. So effectively when the discovery happened, everybody here thought that maybe within you know, a very short period of time, gas would be available at people's homes, which is not the case. So the, one, of the re one of the things that we actually did uh, as uh, DEFA for this round, which has helped us progress uh, accordingly, was to completely disengage any uh, resource discoveries in the Cyprus economic, uh, exclusive economic zone from the project of having uh, DEFA, let's say, bringing us to Cyprus. The justification for our project has gone on the security of supply. Uh, so, and it's been uh, justified on the basis that uh, we are building an infrastructure to be there, to be able to bring gas and bring LNG effectively, even if at the longer term there is the development of the Aphrodite or other fields, and even if there is pipeline gas, etc., etc., our project goes ahead. So, this is one of the important critical differences of the past. So we did not have, uh, we, we were not hostage to uh, decisions of third parties as to whether they will develop the field, how they will develop the field, how is it going to come. Uh, so we've had this justification and, and it's worked very well for us so far. Cyprus has, uh, has obligations to meet uh, certain uh, criteria and certain, uh, in terms of using, moving from uh, liquid fuels uh, and moving to cleaner sources of uh, 
uh, energy generation, let's say. Uh, and so our project with DEFA clearly aims towards uh, that. One is that it will help meet these requirements within 2020. So we hope that with the success of the project will be compliant. Uh, so the Republic will meet its uh, targets with respect to the natural gas, switching of the fuels. We think that uh, eventually the use of gas and uh, will lead uh, and the new efficiencies that will come in the system will lead to a reduction of prices for electricity. Uh, and that basically will help both people and uh, the industrial sector who is, uh, or businesses who are now having a big cost in terms of electricity, use of electricity. And then you have the situation where basically when uh, a country is methanized, so when you have uh, natural gas arriving to a country, a lot of other things happen. That's why I'm saying we're like step zero. Our project is step zero because we already have another project with the European Union called uh, Synergy, uh, which basically Synergy is looking at the uses and the penetration of natural gas in Cyprus. So we're looking at uh, sectors like transportation, uh, we're looking, let's say, uh, bunkering, uh, we're looking industrial use and so forth. So I think what this could lead as a stepping stone for the whole evolution of the Cyprus economy around a different uh, fundamental basis. So, and then step two or three or four could be, let's say, the, the provision of uh, uh, the gas uh, for other industrial uses. So like uh, petrochemicals, maybe uh, different uh, uses. We so far have uh, a lot of interest uh, from, uh, let's say, a variety of companies. We have a challenge in the sense uh, that we're combining, we, we are purchasing the FSRU, we're not chartering an FSRU, uh, and we are combining in one tender both the, the ship, which is the FSRU, the civil construction, and the operations and maintenance. Uh, there's different reasons why we're proceeding with this uh, uh, path, uh, main reason being the, uh, the state of the company as it is today and the timeline that we have to implement. So we'd rather have one consortium, one uh, party to, to implement. If uh, we looking at uh, evaluation and, as I, and I think uh, award, uh, we're planning to have it by December. We have secured the grant uh, for uh, uh, so if you think that the project is estimated around 300 million uh, euro, we've secured 100 million, 101 as grant from the European Commission. Uh, and we are in discussion with different financial institutions that have expressed uh, serious interest for providing the, the funding for this. Uh, we hope that uh, by the end of the year, once we have the tenders in, we will be able to have financial close and also, let's say, uh, award the tender. At the same time, we are disengaging supply and infrastructure. That is one, another differentiation from previous attempts. And then until December, we will uh, uh, enter into master sales agreements with a number of companies that fit the requirements to be able to supply gas. Now, once we award the tender for the infrastructure, then in the next year, in 19, we will also issue a tender for the short to medium term, medium to longer term uh, supply of a base load of gas. Once we award the project, so we will know delivery times, uh, size of vessel and so forth, we will be able then to uh, issue a more specific tender for the longer term supply of, uh, of gas. Uh, and effectively we're looking at uh, targeting early delivery in 2020 and the successful Timing is very important, so in the, in the way that we will be evaluating the tenders, uh, the ones that have a credible solution 
uh, that uh, uh, deliver it closer to the beginning of 2020 will have an advantage, clearly. There's a detailed financial model that is being structured and so forth. Effectively, I think, let's say, looking at starting early in 2019, you know, full speed for, uh, for implementing. The regional energy cooperation so far is based on the, on the development of the hydrocarbons discoveries. Uh, so we as DEFA are actually a node, a receiving node at this point in time. Uh, having said that, uh, we have interest from companies active in the whole of the region to supply gas. Uh, and uh, it is something that we'll develop as an interesting node for Cyprus. I think, I think the potential for Cyprus is not the, is not the uh, LNG project, the LNG import project, but it's for Cyprus to become a, a services center for the whole hydrocarbons industry in the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, and uh, that means servicing, let's say, uh, or using it as a hub or a basis for, for work uh, in Egypt, for work in Israel, maybe work in, in Lebanon. I mean, uh, already clearly a lot of work would happen locally in these different countries, but a lot of it can also happen from other locations and Cyprus is very well suited for that. Already we know of companies in Cyprus servicing uh, work on Zor. So, and also doing things, let's say, for Israel. So, that is the potential. DEFA, as the mother company of the infrastructure, will have uh, the role of TSO and will also own the onshore pipeline. The other part, uh, which we're doing the LNG import project right now, the subsidiary also, uh, will, uh, we're in discussions with the Electricity Authority of Cyprus that they have. Uh, uh, they might take up to 30% of the equity. And also we will be getting uh, a 10-year uh, exception, uh, derogation for monopoly for, uh, for bringing the, the gas uh, to Cyprus. And we believe that uh, for the infrastructure, that will also get an exemption as a terminal for maybe up to 20 years. So our role becomes very crucial and, and a very uh, specific in one way, but instrumental in another way in terms of uh, facilitating a lot of the developments around. I think the demand for natural gas, again, we can only anticipate the demand because uh, it's a first for Cyprus, but uh, experience in other countries shows that the demand increases in very rapid, uh, rapid uh, rates. I think that uh, on the question as to whether we're going to have uh, a gas supply to households, I think that is a much later stage in the whole development because that will mean uh, Cyprus is quite sparsely populated compared to uh, large uh, European cities. So the cost benefit becomes a different way, how you would actually do that and so forth. But there are areas, there are, um, uh, plans that are being looked at uh, or propositions that are being looked at where you would have uh, a, the introduction of maybe micro LNG stations uh, in, uh, in uh, regional industrial areas or in the hotel zones and so forth that basically would be supplied by uh, through bunkering let's say or uh, through truck loading or through uh, taking the gas in the different areas and have show, uh, small uh, uh, distributional networks that uh, would increase the need for consumption and so forth. I think uh, the, the thoughts and the ideas are all there. The experience in Europe is significant. Uh, so we are leveraging our relationship with different companies uh, uh, and, uh, of course, the network we have through Synergy to be able to understand this and, and plan it better. But, uh, uh, as I said before, we have kind of a single-minded focus uh, uh, to get this project done. So, I think uh, once we actually 
uh, award the, the job, then everything else will come into play and we will have a better plan and a more, uh, more detailed plan forward. So let's say for us, 2020, for Cyprus to move to a cleaner uh, sources of uh, energy, we will implement the natural gas project, so the DEFA project, which is the import of LNG to Cyprus. And the two will coexist and, and it will be great to see uh, the, uh, the, the further uh, adoption of renewables to cover more needs. Thank you.